So you've said this is your third film in your family trilogy after Brother Tide and Blue Valentine. But that's a, a, that's a subject you wouldn't expect a, a male director to tackle. But that almost seems to be the point, you know, breaking that stereotype of these films. Is that the case? Well, yeah, I'm interested, you know, I've always been interested in uh, families and, and, and cinema. I feel like uh, in a family you get to really know the secrets about people and you get to know people on an intimate level, you know. I feel like I know my family better than I know anybody. And so, and I also think the cinema is the place for that, those same secrets and intimacies. I mean, you sit in a dark room and you're looking up at the screen and you're seeing, you know, all these private moments. And so that's, that's what I try to find in my movies. It's been that way since I was a kid. I used to always try to take pictures of people in my house uh, in arguments when I was a kid because I felt like those pictures of all of us smiling on the wall were kind of uh, false. I thought that was a bad way to put ourselves out into the world, you know? It didn't seem true to me. So, I, you know, I remember going to Disneyland with my, my family when I was a teenager and my dad blowing his tire in the middle of the Arizona desert and I was filming him change his tire as the traffic was going by him at 75 miles an hour and he was getting so mad at me, you know what I mean? Why are you shooting this? You know, I remember shooting pictures of my mom and brother fighting when my brother was like, you know, six years old wearing his underwear and my mom is like in curlers and, uh, and they're just crying and screaming at each other. And, you know, I, I was always interested in telling the true picture of what went on inside a house. Well, I think you've definitely mastered it at this point. Uh, but now you're moving into action sequences and I thought you did a really nice job in this movie with the, with the robberies. How was it filming those? It was great. I mean, my reference point for those robbery sequences were, it wasn't other movies. It was uh, America's Wildest Police Chases and Cops. That's what I was watching. I wanted, you know, if Blue Valentine was known for anything, it was for its kind of honesty and kind of frank take on sexuality. And, you know, this movie goes into more genre elements. And I wanted those genre elements to have the same sort of truth to them, same sort of honesty. So that meant we had to really do these things. That meant actors like Ryan Gosling had to train extensively to be able to do a lot of the stunts because there were certain stunts where he would have to rob a bank in a single take, no cuts, mm -hmm. rob a bank, get out on a motorcycle, try to start the motorcycle, the motorcycle won't start, uh, finally gets it started, he goes out into traffic, a police, a police officer is like hot on his tail and then he has, to blow, he has to blow through an intersection mm -hmm. and avoid 36 cars. Wow. And yeah, he had to do that, there's no place I could hide a stunt man, so that meant he had to train. And I remember we had this guy, Rick Miller, who's like, anytime the Batman puts on the bat suit and yeah. goes on a motorcycle, that's Rick Miller in the bat suit. So oh, he, wow. was, he was training Ryan. We were about eight, eight weeks out of production, and he had a, his first day with Ryan. And I said, after this session, I said, scale of one to 10, where would you put Ryan? He said, it's about a three. And I said, ooh, that's, yeah. I said, that's, uh, I said, well, you got eight weeks. Where can you get him in eight weeks, realistically? He said, maybe a three and a half, maybe a four. And I was like, oh no. He says, look, this is like uh, you want to play in the NBA. You know, you got to start playing basketball from the time you're six. It's a lifetime commitment to be this good at something. I said, well, all you can do is just work with him, you know? So he worked with him for eight weeks. The day before production, I asked him again. I said, what level did Ryan get to? He said, about a seven. Oh, that's fantastic. So that shows you the magic of Ryan Gosling. He, ha he can do things that other people, normal people like me, could never do. My last question for you is, the editor on my show went to the University of Colorado and studied film. Oh, wow. And saw you speak in Phil Solomon's class. Oh, wow. Uh, is it important to you to keep that connection alive with film school and your old, pr your old professors? Absolutely. Phil Solomon is, you know, is a good friend of mine. He's one of my lifelong friends, you know, and I, I had the good fortune of studying under him and, you know, studying under Stan Brackage and, you know, many other great Great professors and so I still try to go back there you know as much as I can and you know as long as they'll have me back you know I, I when I went to film school there I was disappointed because I wanted to go to USC or UCLA or NYU you know I used to sleep under a picture of Martin Scorsese when I was a kid you know and so I wanted to follow in his footsteps or you know Coppola's footsteps or Lucas's footsteps and you know we couldn't afford to go to one of those film schools so we kind of settled on the University of Colorado because I'm from Colorado it was a you know local school it wasn't that much money first day I was in class, uh, I saw Mothlight by Stan Brackage, and it completely changed my perception of, uh, of cinema. And I'm so thankful I had that, uh, that education. So I'm very thankful. I'm, I'm, I wouldn't be the filmmaker I am today without having that really specific uh, education that I had at the University of Colorado.